My name is Norris McDonald. This feature is brought to you three times a day by the Toronto Star. I work for the wheels section. And uh, this afternoon, our first session of the day, I think it's going to be really interesting because we're not necessarily talking about futuristic things because everything is happening now, but it is really kind of the sort of thing that we all don't necessarily think about all the time. And that is the way transportation and mobility is beginning to change. And the way it's changing is beginning with the delivery process, whether it's meals uh, being delivered to homes or medical supplies being driven to being, being delivered to uh, say uh, First Nations uh, communities in the far north of Ontario or uh, business to business delivery of cargo. And so my guests, my, my far right, your left, is Michael Zara. He's the CEO of Drone Delivery Canada. Welcome, Thank Michael. Thank you. Good morning. Next to him is Ignacio Tardival, who is with Tiny Mile Delivery Service. We'll get around talking about that in a moment. Thank I, you. I keep talk, wanting to call it ti Tiny Time for whatever. And, and then to my immediate right, Apexka Kumabak. Wow, I can't believe that I actually did that. Who is the chief engineer of Gator. And that is the uh, delivery of cargo from business to business. I'd like to start with Michael on the far side. However, the drone delivery, and by the way, Michael, you have a display down in the level 800 um, of the South Building. Some of your drones are down there. You have a couple of small ones, and then you have what looks to me to be a miniature helicopter that uh, is the Condor, I believe it's called, That's and right. can, can carry up to 400 pounds of payload. That's right. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Tell me about Drone Delivery Canada, when it started, how long it's been going, and uh, where you're at now. Sure. Um, thank you. So. Uh, we started about five years ago. Uh, we're publicly traded, and uh, we spent the first few years developing the technology, getting approval from the regulator, who in Canada is Transport Canada. And uh, we have a fleet today of uh, four drones. Three of them are on display, uh, as you mentioned, in the 800 uh, section right beside uh, Alfa Romeo. Um, so we've got two small drones. Small meaning they're probably about you know three feet by three feet by three feet, and we've got a very large a gasoline power drone, as you said, the Condor, uh, which looks like a small helicopter, and that's a long-range, uh, heavy-lift helicopter for unmanned drone systems for cargo. And right now, you are involved primarily in business-to-business -business in, for want of a better word, outlying areas, but the plan is to get closer by going into suburban areas and eventually right downtown. So we're starting off where the regulations allow, which are more rural communities, uh, but we're starting to uh, move into suburban communities as well. It's really a business-to-business -business application today, so uh, a FedEx or a Purelater or one of those kinds of companies would use our system for last mile delivery. But you're right, eventually uh, you'll see drone uh, deliveries in suburban and then urban areas down the road. Right, now 400 pounds of payload I don't even know what that is in kilometers, but, or kilometers, kilograms, by the way. Uh, but what, what, give me an example of the largest thing that this can carry. A couple of car batteries, or uh, maybe what's the largest thing that you've had delivered to uh, an, one of these outlying areas? Sure. So the, uh, the, the Condor would be typically for a lot of industrial applications. So you could be going out uh, to sea to an oil rig. There's a lot of oil rigs off the okay, coast. That's so interesting. you're bringing a 200 pound hydraulic hose for some repairs. You could be going out to a, a ship at sea. A lot of the large ports, like in Singapore, the very large ships don't come into port. They're too big. So you need to fly out parts, medical supplies, documents. You can do that with one of the smaller drones as well. Or it could be an open pit uh, mine that's 20 kilometers by 20 kilometers. And you need to move repair parts around. So you could use a a large drone for that. It's faster than somebody else in a pickup truck, for instance. So it's really uh, long distance, heavy lift, industrial applications. One more question before I move on to these uh, other folks. We, we talked about First Nations communities in the far north of Ontario. What is the sort of thing that you would take into those communities? Medical supplies, food, um, I, I don't know. What, what, what would you 
use a, a, a Condor drone for in a situation like that. So in the, uh, in the First Nations and Inuit communities, and there's a, there's a thousand of them in Canada, and they have uh, very poor quality of living, they have very poor health care, uh, very poor access to good quality food, it's very expensive. So uh, we're working on a number of projects in First Nations communities, um, and a lot of them are very, very isolated. At, at best, they may have seasonal roads. Right. Uh, worst case, they've got no roads and it's all air access on a very infrequent basis. So we could be bringing things like e-commerce parcels, we could be bringing postal mail, but we could also be bringing medical supplies, uh, vaccines, because we can temperature control the cargo, uh, we could also be bringing blood tests out of the community into a lab for blood testing and these sort of things. So it's very, very, very... ...about, you know, I, I think one of the big problems, um, you know, and I'm sure you'll get involved with this, is, is if there is one major problem in all of these far northern communities, it's the water quality, and they have to have the... Uh, chemicals that they can add to the existing system to make it potable and uh, I think that you know uh, drones might see a, a bit of a revolution as far as living standards and the rest of it in some of these places very interesting now you you don't go all that far at all do you Ignacio no, no. we're talking pretty much downtown Toronto and tell me a little bit about tiny mile delivery service uh, how long it's been going and uh, what it is and what you do. Thank you. So the co-founders used to work at Uber AGG building autonomous cars. And we were a little bit disappointed because we were for many, many years, but we never got a product on the streets. Building something autonomous is really hard. So we decided to build a very small delivery robot. So this is a 10 pound, basically as heavy as a baby. So it's a very small robot that goes a walking speed on, on the sidewalks. Right. And because it's so lightweight, it's actually very safe. It's really hard to, to harm someone. Right. And, and by doing that... So in other words, if it runs into somebody by accident, it's really not going to hurt anybody. Okay. That's correct. And because autonomy is so difficult, that's, that might happen at some point. Right. But we're able to have a product working today. Right. Now, you use it for meal delivery. You work with uh, Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes and some of the... Uh, bigger companies that advertise on television um, and, and come into play. Do they contact you or use your app and say, go pick up a steak dinner at the steak pit and take it to my house? Uh, how, how does that process uh, work out? That, that's correct. So we're basically a career for one of these big companies. We're also doing other things. Mm -hmm. So we can do deliveries for pharmacies. So if you're not feeling well at 2 a.m., we can have drugs delivered to you. Okay. We, oh, ha wow. we can move, for example, paperwork between offices. Sure. It's, it's common at law firms that they have constantly people moving paperwork between their offices. Right. And you have a website that someone such as myself can contact you specifically. Is there an app? We don't have an app. So we partner with our companies. Okay. So in other words, working through them is how you, in fact, get involved with uh, bring me, bring me cough medicine at two o'clock in the morning. Yes, that's correct. We decided not to vertically integrate because mm -hmm. we don't want to just do food delivery. We want to do everything. So if you have any crazy idea that could use our robots, then we can partner with you. Okay, that sounds fascinating. We're, I'm going to come back and ask you a few more questions right now. I have to talk to Apesca. Yeah. I've done it twice in a row. I'm feeling <laughs> really proud. <laughs> Um, Chief Engineer, tell me a little bit about yourself as far as, as uh, your education and then how you got involved uh, with the Gatic. Yep. So uh, the founders of Gatic, we are, uh, come from uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Mm -hmm. uh, we have spent almost over three decades combined experience of robotics, self-driving and mobile navigation applications. Uh, Gothic is basically, it's a Palo Alto based, Silicon Valley based startup and we are developing self-driving vehicles for uh, business to business logistics applications for retail industry. Right. So uh, our vehicles are basically, uh, we are addressing the, uh, our mission is to address the issues of uh, the middle mile, lo middle mile logistics, okay. which is the most expensive and challenging part of a supply chain. Okay. And we are elevating the problems and creating, uh, basically, uh, delivering goods uh, mm -hmm. safely and efficiently for these retailers. Okay. 
So now there's small delivery vans uh, that don't have a driver. So these are not small delivery vans. Uh, okay. our, we are platform agnostic. We do uh, deliveries using light duty trucks, vans, and uh, commercial uh, vehicles. Okay. So our technology is, we put our technology on these vehicles for delivering goods for retailers. Okay, but basically what it comes down to is there is no driver. Yes. <laughs> there, in other words, I can be driving down the street and take a look over at the vehicle next to me at a stoplight or a stop sign and there's nobody behind the wheel. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's for, 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 for someone of my vintage, let's put it that way, something like that can be somewhat disconcerting, you know? You see someone who, who is not as tall as I am uh, and therefore they don't sit as high up in a vehicle and so the joke is, gee, how are they driving that car? Now you can say there's nobody driving that car. And the, the reason being that at some point this is going to save companies money by not having a paid delivery driver to do this? So uh, the, the benefits of self-driving technology, autonomous vehicle technology, goes beyond just saving costs, operational costs. These are, that's one of the major advantage of uh, reducing the operational costs for the businesses that we are uh, creating the service for. However, uh, having autonomous vehicle technology in the middle mile uh, space uh, introduces a lot more capabilities that have not yet been uh, not yet been taken advantage of because of the way uh, the model has been structured. Sure. So. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Yeah. So. You're on a roll. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah, so uh, basically, like uh, we can do 24 by 7 deliveries uh, efficiently. We can have multiple uh, customers. Uh, uh, we can service multiple customers uh, using the same vehicles. So what we envision is uh, Gatik being. Uh, we can think about Gatik in the next coming years as Airbnb or Uber of vehicles, okay. where where we have uh, where we f see businesses like uh, retail uh, businesses and retail industry. Think about Gatik as the go-to company for ensuring a safe, reliable, and affordable means of transporting their goods between their warehouses or distribution centers. You know, the reason I said I didn't want to interrupt you was because I'm not a I'm not a radio personality <laughs> who wants to put myself into the story all the time, right? I want to try to learn along with everybody else who's watching the live stream of this at the Auto Show's Facebook page, by the way. And incidentally, all of these sessions, all the Auto Show Live sessions are posted, taped and posted to the Auto Show's YouTube channel. So if you're fascinated by what everybody's talking about here today and didn't catch absolutely everything, well, you can just go to your computer and call it up and uh, enjoy it and learn from it there. So now, Michael, I'm going to go back to you for a moment and talk to you about my personal favorite subject when it comes to drones. Look at that, he's smiling because he knows where I'm going with this. We're talking about business to business, we're talking about commerce, we're talking about packaging, we're talking all that sort of stuff. At some point, a drone, presumably a Drone Delivery Canada drone, is going to come to my house and pick me up and take me downtown. Uh, number one, am I uh, talking sensibly? Uh, is this possible? And if it is possible, uh, give me a wild guess. What are we talking? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? So the, the way the industry is progressing right now is really dependent on the regulations. So the regulations uh, from Transport Canada um, allow us to do unmanned uh, deliveries, mm -hmm. mostly in remote, rural, and suburban communities. So the next step will be the industry will allow for uh, unmanned uh, drone deliveries in urban centers. Right. Might not, maybe not, might not be the density of downtown Toronto, sure, sure. but eventually we'll, we'll get there. After that, um, and we're talking a few years out, we'll see unmanned flying taxis. In fact, uh, we talked about this the other day, uh, they're piloting that in Dubai as, as we speak. Right, so, right. So you know, it's a few years away. Probably in Canada, it's five plus years away before we're seeing That's unmanned. not very but long. That's, that's, not, that's in our lifetime and it's not that far away. Uh, but they're piloting it right now 
Um, so it's, it's not that far away. Right. I was talking to, there was a, a fascinating futuristic trade show that I did some interviewing at last spring after the auto show called Discovery. And actually it was here, right here in the, in the uh, uh, Metro Toronto Convention Center. And it was uh, uh, the future, the automobile, the future, the airplane. And uh, I did do an interview with one gentleman who said, uh, you know, the, the big expense uh, 10 or 15 years down the line is building the landing pad on the top of your house so that instead of parking your car in your garage you will just have your drone and then you'll go out in the morning and either go to work or drop your kids off at school or or go to the beach in the summertime and and that sort of stuff I mean I, 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 I was not a child of the 60s I was a child of the 50s here I am dating myself here but of course in the 60s, one of the most popular television shows was the Jetsons, and that was what everybody did. Nobody drove, you know, everybody flew around. And uh, so of course I said, do you have to have a pilot's license? And he said, no, it's all done by, it will all be done by computers, and uh, you just sit back and relax. And in fact, the whole rush toward autonomous automobiles is you take it to the next step and you go up rather than just being on the ground. Let me get back to, tiny mile delivery services. And again, I just, talking to you here, it's fascinating. Saw your website with, uh, what's your name of your little, uh, uh, Jeffrey? That's right. Jeffrey is, is pedaling along and, and he's passing people walking on the street. You know, this is fine, except, you always have to throw an, an except in here. You know, there are people in this world the vast majority of people understand this and will stand aside and let Jeffrey tootle on by with somebody's steak dinner. Um, but as has been proven with the little Canadian robot of a couple of years ago that hitchhiked all over North America, most people picked him, it up, him or her, I can't remember, but picked it up and drove it down the road and then very carefully sent it out at the side until eventually you got the dimwit who just decided, okay, and threw it into the forest. And that. What are you going to do to guard against somebody walking along and saying, oh, I think I'll just pick this thing up and take it home. You know, are you going to have some kind of an electrical charge on there that if I touch it, you go, oh, jeez, I can't do it. Or, or, or what do you do to guard against, uh, you know, the small minority in, in society, but they are out there. Let's not kid ourselves. The, the first time we put the robot on the street, right? I was so worried because we worked for <laughs> so long on it, and I was so sure it will happen within five minutes. Right. But it's been so many months, and, and it hasn't happened. Oh, great! And Isn't that nice? So that's that's evidence of how nice Canadians are. Right. Well, you know, years ago, uh, and again, I've been in the newspaper business forever. I was driving the University of Toronto solar-powered car, and I was driving it through Rosedale, and in fact, now that I think about it, I was live on the CBC at the time talking about the experience. And of course, it's a great solar-powered car, but it was pretty rudimentary, and it had no springs, no shocks, and so I was, you know, you hit a bump and you just about break your back. But you know what? I got chased by a dog. A great big German Shepherd saw me coming down the street in this thing that looked like a big bug. And before you know it, here comes this dog. And I'm thinking to myself, thank goodness most people keep their dogs on chains or leashes these days, as otherwise, Jeffrey would be getting chased, I guarantee you. By a dog, yeah. By a dog, you know. So, so far, the, the closest thing we happened was a dad with a baby following the robot for 10 blocks and then just throwing his baby in front oh. every now and then. Oh, oh. So that, that was a good real test of, of how well the system worked. Oh, fab well, no, fab that, you, you like to know how that's going to actually work out. Pesca? Yes, I did it again. time right. I did it again three times. Um, what do you see for the future of your business? Now, again, you've got a pilot project contract with Walmart in Arkansas. Yep. Uh, do you see that expanding to other states and to provinces? 
uh, such as Ontario? Yes. So uh, Walmart is one of our uh, customers, but we have contracts with other uh, one of like one of the top retailers one of our customers is uh one of the top re retailers in north america mm -hmm. uh for whom we are deploying our vehicles currently in ontario province uh in the greater toronto area and uh we have uh we have a couple of vehicles on road uh, on public roads in toronto today uh with walmart we are currently we have our vehicles currently deployed in arkansas However, we are uh, expanding the, the, uh, this uh, partnership with mm -hmm. Walmart to other states uh, in states as well. Right. Now, I was going to say, your, your deal with Walmart is primarily for food delivery and stuff like that? Yeah. So, uh, we deliver goods, uh, not necessarily just food. Okay. Uh, so, we deliver goods, uh, inventory replenishment for Walmart from their one of their stores in Arkansas, uh, one of their dark stores, uh, inventory stores in Arkansas to uh, one of their other market uh, retail stores uh, mm -hmm. close by. You know, it's really interesting how the more things change, the more they stay the same and what goes around comes around. Um, when I was a little kid and my mother wanted to buy something from Eaton's department store, which no longer exists in Canada, but she would pick up the phone, she would read the catalog and then she would pick up the phone and she would call and place the order and they would deliver it. Uh -huh. And then they stopped doing that. But now it's coming back, yes. right? So, uh, <laughs> Maybe in a, in a different way, but it's, you know, how are you gonna buy a lot of things? I can just see it. You go online, which is the modern day catalog, and you say, oh, that's a great idea. And maybe it's gotta be a drone delivery. Maybe Jeffrey's gotta come and knock on my door or your truck is going to show up without a driver. So uh, we see our solution as complementary to what uh, Jeffrey and his company, uh, to the Tiny Mile uh, company. So uh, what our solution is, is basically fulfilling the need of delivery of goods between right. the, in the gap of, uh, so we have long haul trucking on one end, which right. delivers goods from between the states and between distrib larger distribution centers. And then we have sidewalk robots that take goods from retailers or uh, a point of uh, uh, delivery centers closer to the consumers and do uh, uh, address the last one mile to two miles radius closer to the customer. What we are addressing is this gap in between these two sectors uh, going from distribution centers or micro distribution centers right. closer to the retail stores uh, from where uh, a sidewalk delivery robot takes up the food. Sure. So uh, we are basically addressing the middle mile, uh, mm -hmm. which is which is uh, w which has its own, uh, which is the most expensive and the challenging part of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, using our solutions of autonomous delivery uh, vehicles, we are able to reduce, uh, give uh, significant savings on the operational costs for the retailers. Fascinating. Okay, one more question each, then we're going to have to wrap this up. I think it's been a terrific half hour, or however long it's been since we've been talking. Uh, we've got drones, we've got Jeffrey, the little robot. We've got driverless vans. I think it's fantastic. Michael, to finish up, um, what's the furthest? I'm, I was going to be a smart guy. Okay, actually, I will be a smart guy. You know, drones and your driverless vans at a time of... Uh, I won't say a crisis, but certainly inconvenience for many people because of the fact that there's no, uh, there's no goods being shipped at the moment in Canada because the railways are shut down. Uh, that's where we need folks like you to get the medicine through and, uh, and some other vital supplies. Um, frankly, you're soon to be, if not already, a very important cog in the whole transportation slap slash delivery uh, sector. And uh, seems to me the sky's the limit. The, the sky is the limit and, and our and largest- That's a pun, by the way. I, I, I really know, I've, I've, I've heard it before. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, our, our largest uh, drone, the Condor, is 400 pounds of cargo, 200 kilometers. Uh, but we're working on a few more. Some are gonna be thousands of pounds, thousands of kilometers. We're actually working on one that's probably three or four years away that will lift a 40-foot container. So then you're talking something that's pretty significant. Then you are, absolutely. Well, can't come soon enough for some, some communities in this country. Uh, 
is Jeffrey about to have a, a partner soon? How many, how many of these little delivery drones can you see put putting all over uh, Toronto? And, and, you know, I know you're here now, but presumably you're going to be just about everywhere before long, right? What's your, what's your plan as far as expansion? Will you go to Montreal? Will you go to Vancouver? Yeah, we are a very new startup. So the company used to be just myself a few months ago. Right. So now we're 10 people and we're trying to put 50 robots in by July and okay. then just start spending. You know, some, nobody's going to be able to walk anymore, though, with all this traffic on the side. We got, we got a pilot project for scooters, right? And by the way, they, they all say, oh, well, the people using the scooters will use the bike lanes. I have been in the United States, in Indianapolis, and in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, Phoenix, and and they ride them on the sidewalk. And, and you know, so now you get Jeffrey and Jeffrey S. scooting around there. This, the sidewalks are going to become dangerous places before long. Where are you guys going to go? Where Where's your company going to be in five years? So we see ourselves as uh, we, our mission is basically to have more safe, reliable and affordable means of transporting goods uh, for businesses. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves, uh, so we, we see that uh, self-driving or autonomous vehicle technology is going to be mainstream of, uh, for transportation mm -hmm. in the next 20 years. And uh, at Gatik, we see ourselves defining in the defining role of shaping this industry mm -hmm. of logistics uh, for retail. Well, I'm telling you, it's been a fascinating half hour. I want to thank you for coming. Uh, Norris McDonald for the Toronto Star and Auto Show Live. Uh, we will be back at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Hope you can join us then. Thank you for watching.